All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. So we are going to be looking at a CD 700, 7007, 7007. Uh, I did a part that looks similar to this that was all NPN transistors, all bipolar transistors. Um, I used it on my uh, synthesizer board and it is a CA3046. So um, I used that as having matched, uh, matched transistors for the, uh, for the uh, Moog um, filter. Okay. Now this is all matched FETs. Um, they are complementary pairs. And so uh, they can be used in all sorts of different ways. But again, you have to be careful. Remember, maybe you don't remember. On the um, CA3046, one of the emitters is tied to the substrate and the other ones are put on top of the substrate in, in lithography. And so when you use these things, you can never have a potential. The, the very lowest potential has to be on that last pin, that, that one that's connected to the substrate. If it's biased higher, then nothing works. And I had that problem with the circuit until I figured that out. Well, this is no different. Um, pin 7 also connects to the substrate, and so you have to be careful when you use this part as well. Um, it is kind of a strange part. Um, like these are connected, so the gates are connected. Uh, this one has some things connected. These two have the gate connected. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a, a weird part and it's, it's used for various things. So I thought we would first kind of look at a FET. Um, I don't think I've ever measured a FET uh, on the curve tracer uh, as a video. So let's do that first. Um, I am going to be using um, this last uh, FET here. So pin seven, six, seven, and eight. Uh, I will hook up the uh, analyzer to pin six, seven, and eight. Now, when you talk transistors, when you um, put those on semiconductor analysis equipment, like a curve tracer, you are forcing a current and measuring a current. Um, well, FET devices are not current devices, they're voltage devices, so you need to force a voltage and measure a current. Um, so that's a little bit different, but but the, the curve tracer I have will allow us to do that, so let's go take a look at that first. All right, I have the part here, and I have the emitter tied to pin 7, which will be our source. Uh, we have the base connected to pin 6, which will be our gate. And we have the collector hooked up to pin 8, which will be our drain. So, um, on the uh, curve tracer, this is the step generator. And uh, up here, you're in microamp ranges. Here, you're in milliamp ranges. And you can force currents, and it'll step those. Um, this little section down here, though, is voltages. So uh, here, if you have it set, it will force, vol it will step voltages and then measure currents as, as before. So let's take a look at what a trace looks like. Let me move the camera a little bit more. All right, so um, let's just give you a picture first so you can see it looks like a transistor, all right? Um, so we are at two volts per division horizontally, so we are at 12 volts. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Um, and we are vertical 2 milliamps. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 milliamps in the vertical direction. Now what about the steps? Okay, the steps are here. They're 2 volt steps. So there's 2 volts between each step. 
Um, and so you'd say, okay, well, it's two, four, two, four, six, eight. That'd be an eight volts. Well, no, you you would get trapped if you did that. Okay, I have it set up to five steps. Okay, so how many steps do we have? One, two, three, four. Okay, there's four steps, but I have the instrument set to step five. So we must be missing one. If you count it in reverse order, this is the fifth, fourth, third, second. And number one is missing. Let's open the vertical here and you can just see it right down there at the very, very bottom. Now it's 100 microamps. So it's only 50 microamps of current way, 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 way down there. So there is a uh, gate to source voltage that the transistor needs in order to start to operate. And so in this particular case, we would have uh, two, this would be the four volt trace, uh, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. So there we go. Uh, right here in the middle, we're stepping around uh, 10, eight, six, around six volts here. Um, and everything's looking good. So it does look like a nice FET. Um, looks like we have a gate turn on somewhere below four volts. Um, we could read the data sheet and see what that is, but uh, we are getting some turn on here at four volts. So again, four, six, eight, ten. All right. Uh, if we go a little bit further, you can start to see things are starting to rise here. And the, so the, the part's starting to break down. It's not a very high voltage part. Um, so this would be 14 volts, 14 volts right here. This would be 16 volts. I think the rated absolute maximum 18 volts. So you don't want to go very high. But here at 12 volts, they're very, very happy. So we can certainly operate it there. All right, uh, so let's pick a circuit out. I think we'll just uh, see if we can't build a, um, a buffer. These things are good at uh, doing buffer type things. And uh, let's hook one up. All right, like I said, these are pairs. Okay, so this, this was an N channel. We measured an N channel, it's marked N here. So um, there are P channels as well. So this is an N channel. This is a P channel, P channel, N channel, P channel, N channel. All right, and um, these guys here look interesting. I think we'll go ahead and try to use these. We'll try to use these in a kind of a push-pull type environment. We'll put in a signal here and see if we can't use these two as a, uh, a buffer um, in a totem pole type configuration. So yeah, let's, let's wear those up. All right, I'm just playing with this little circuit here. It's a little follower. I've got some uh, current limiting on it. Um, and we are going to inject a signal here and we will measure a signal here. So we're using the, uh, uh, this section here. So pin three already connects the two, uh, gates together. Everything else is, is open. So here, uh, again, three gates are connected, but then I had to connect pins two and four together and then five goes down to ground and one goes up to plus five and we're going to inject on pin three and take a look at the pins two and four so uh that's uh the, that's the output let me move you to the input this is the input now the input uh is let's see here it has a one volt amplitude and a one volt offset because this is a single ended. It goes, it's referenced to ground. So I need to have everything above ground. So I put in a one volt off it, offset and a one volt amplitude for this particular signal. It's a sync signal. And if we go to the output, then the output is up a little higher. It should be exactly halfway between um, plus five and ground. And uh, let's see, what are we here? Five, five, ten. This is one volt, one and a half volts. Uh, yeah, one, two, this is two and a half. So it's kind of averaging out in the middle there. So that seems about right. We could go to a uh, different, we'll go to a sine wave. 
and there we go 5 10 15 20 yeah we're at two volts um let's try out some other things here square wave looks pretty good look pretty fast nice sharp edges oops and uh yeah uh let's do an ekg those are always fun yeah there we go uh oh did i have an ekg i did have the ekg didn't i, I was thinking i had the sync pulse here's the sync pulse yeah there's the sync pulse which is always fun to look at so anyway uh there's one application where we've just used it as a buffer and i'm going to make a uh, separate video with some other applications for the 4007 it can do quite a bit quite a few things uh, there's a some people use it for voltage controlled amplifiers and synthesizers so it's popular for that um, it originally was made to do logic so just to give you a Let's see here. Um, yeah, so you can make it into any type of device you want, an inverter or OR gate, AND gate and stuff. Shows you how to, uh, how to wire those things up. These are all the pin numbers for how to wire it up for the various things. We'll take a look at that. Um, and uh, people use them for current sources, sync, current sinks. Um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of interesting things. That's what they used for testing. Originally, they were intended to be full on, full off. But if you uh, put some current limiting on them, you can use them in between as well. So they are quite flexible. 